Yeah, yeah. And it takes a well, and it takes a bunch of different brains all working on it together. It's an honor to have been a part of that initial work and I you know have been following following you know what is happening in in medicine and and how that discovery could have helped could have helped in some small way um but I yeah otherwise I don't I don't know what else to say at this point it's still you know I'm sure it hasn't quite hit me yet We started the work with a with a mutated mouse that had a phenotype that showed that the immune system was overactive. Different from what I had planned, yes. <laughs> I can see that. We used a lot of mouse breeding and then um, to to narrow down the genetic location and then um, and then just hardcore molecular biology. Um, we mapped across the region and we had to do a lot of sequencing. I mean, these days, the sequence of so many organisms is, you know, readily at hand and it would have been a pretty easy, a much easier um, undertaking, but we kind of, we had to generate our own um, complete map and sequence across a pretty large region of the chromosome and then found like a, you know, a single point mutation. And so it was a really, it was a very small, from the DNA level, it was a really small um, alteration that caused, you know, this massive change to how the immune system works, which would indicate that the, whatever it was that was disrupted was pretty, was a pretty key player in how the immune system works. There's an awful lot of um, diseases and different conditions that are impacted by either too much immune reaction or not or not enough. And just understanding, you know, key players in the regulation of the immune system are, you know, make makes a huge contribution to the to the field in general.